Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's Felicia here, taking you on my journey as a medical mom. Today is all about my daughter and her syndrome, Pfeiffer syndrome. I get so many questions. I get so many questions about what is Pfeiffer syndrome, how did you find out, and I'm going to answer a good portion of them today. So first, what is Pfeiffer syndrome? Pfeiffer syndrome is a rare genetic disorder, and it's when you have craniosynostosis, which is a premature fusion of your skull. But what Pfeiffer syndrome means you have more than one. My daughter had a handful of her sutures fused in the womb. So for most babies, you do not have your skull totally fused until you're two years old. So you can just think about that. If your skull is fused, what does that happen? What happens to your brain? It's trying to grow, but there's too much pressure. There's nowhere to go. So for my, my daughter, her skull fused in a handful of um, spots, but the one that was open was her fontanelle. So her head ended up growing in the way, whoop, that direction. So that's where there was space and room to grow. So she's got a little taller head, a taller forehead, and because of that, she's got a smaller, like a more narrow face, and that created shallow orbits in her eyes. So her eyes sit a little bit forward. That created a very narrow nasal bridge that also created a small underdeveloped jaw. So those all together made it really hard for her to breathe through her mouth and her nose. And that is why she has a trach. Also with Pfeiffer syndrome, you'll notice they have broad um, thumbs and big toes that point away from their body. As well as some have um, hearing loss because they have a very narrow ear canal. And so they have conductive hearing loss. There's a lot of different traits when it comes to Pfeiffer syndrome, but those are some of the key ones. Then Pfeiffer syndrome is broken down into three types, type one, two, and three. So at Seattle Children's, we're up in Seattle, they don't really, um, they're not all about the types. They go all the way into more detail as far as the mutation and hers is W290C. So that's the 290th kind of cell, that's where the mutation started for her. So it's a very rare <laughs> mutation within Pfeiffer syndrome. So she's kind of like a hybrid of all of the types. So she has a little bit of everything and you will find some parents that can tell you they have a type one, two or three up here. We just were never told what type she had. So we can't answer that part. But what we can say is that she's thriving. You know, all babies are different when it comes to Pfeiffer syndrome. A lot of people ask me, um, you know, will she have developmental delays? Will she have this? Can she get the trach out of some time? Every kid is different. And that is with every rare genetic disorder, you cannot put them on a certain trajectory. For Kalia, hers is, you know, she, some kids have a, are not on a vent. Kalia is. Some kids don't need a trach. Kalia does. So it varies. Some kids are on a trach and get it off at two. Some don't get it off till 10. So you really can't put a certain timeline to when things will happen for her and when surgeries will happen. So that is one thing I will tell you is that I can't answer some questions because we just don't know. At the end of the day, yes, she has Pfeiffer syndrome, but she also has my genetics and my husband's genetics. So some of those override some things with Pfeiffer syndrome that other kids might have. So now that you know a little bit about Pfeiffer syndrome, um, is there a cure? No, there is not a cure. Um, there's treatment for it. There are surgeries that can help you live a very high quality life, but there are certain things that she'll just have to live with. So one of the things that Clea has is she has um, fused elbows, so she can't fully extend her arms. That is something that she just has to live with. There are things like how she's got more forward saying eyes. There's a surgery for that. So that's something over time she will not have to live with. So there's just various examples of treatment that can correct things and treatment that just helps you live life on a better way. So there is no cure. There's just surgeries for it. Another question. How did you get Pfeiffer syndrome? You know, where did it come from? So our type of Pfeiffer syndrome was not inherited from Rome or myself. It was just, it just happened. And that, that is something that's pretty common as well, depending on what mutation it is. But it's the, I'm always messing this up. I might correct myself, but the F, G, F, R mutation. And like I said, some is hereditary and some is just honestly 
just happens and that's what ours was she didn't inherit from me or Rome but now that she has it she now has a 56 50 percent <laughs> she now has a 50 percent chance of passing it on to her child I have spoken to other women who have kids who have Pfeiffer syndrome and their kids are or do not have Pfeiffer syndrome so there is obviously a chance that her kids will not inherit that so that is just something that she'll figure out down the road another question when did you find out I found out that I had my daughter had Pfeiffer syndrome on my 36 week checkup so at 36 weeks I went in to see where she was is she head down her position how much she weighed and in that appointment they noticed I had a high amount of amniotic fluid and due to that so late in my pregnancy they said usually your fluid starts to decrease but mine was still staying pretty high so I went and saw a specialist a perineologist and in that appointment through that ultrasound they were able to detect some of those features I told you about earlier you know an abnormal shaped head it was a little tall her eyes were a little bulging they said um, there was other things they saw as far as the ventricles in her brain and there being a little bit more fluid because she has hydrocephalus which is pretty much just water on the brain and for us our fluid drains naturally and hers it doesn't it kind of sits there so that's another story but they saw all those in the ultrasound and at that point I went and saw a specialist that that was able to narrow it down to three things so craniosynostosis is when you have fusion of your head follow me here <laughs> and that's usually when you just have one when you have multiple it kind of tends to lean towards a syndrome and there's apert cruzon and Pfeiffer and they're all cousins they all have different things but they're all cousins when it comes to those syndromes and they're all based from that craniosynostosis so they were able to tell me that Clea had one of those and from there I had to switch hospitals I had to really change my birth plan and make sure that Clea got here in the best way possible and my pregnancy then turned into a high-risk pregnancy so you're probably wondering <laughs> why did you find out so late so for Kalia, she's very unique and for her, my doctors told me that her, her skull, all it fused early, but her brain wanted to grow so bad that they kind of they busted open. And so her head wasn't as abnormal as maybe you see in others, but the shape still looked somewhat as a typical head is supposed to look like, but it just was a little bit taller. But regardless, they just couldn't detect it earlier. And for my insurance, and what's pretty common over here in the US, is that you get about three to four ultrasounds in your pregnancy. So before my 36 week checkup, my last ultrasound was around 20 weeks. And at that point, they weren't able to detect it. Maybe if I had a specialist that really focused on those syndromes, they would have seen it, but they couldn't detect it at that point. So there's a great chance that she probably, you know, it did fuse in between those weeks of 20 and 32 or we just weren't able to see it that early. So that is common on mine and people always ask me, well, can you get tested for it? Yes, you can. I don't know all the details behind testing and I'll probably answer that in a different video, but there are tests for it to find out earlier. But I will tell you this, have you ever heard of Pfeiffer syndrome? I didn't think so. I had never heard of it before. So if I didn't know about this rare genetic disorder why would I think to ask the doctors to test me for that? I wouldn't. And so you don't test for those rare genetic disorders until there's a history of it in your family. So now that I have Clea and she has Pfeiffer syndrome, now we are known to have a history of that syndrome. So moving forward, we'll test for it. There's different ways. I know there's ways they can um, draw blood and there's just a lot of different ways that they told me about, but some of them look a little bit more painful and ex more expensive. And then some are just, you know, ultrasounds from a perineologist that specializes in that syndrome really early on in my pregnancy. So that is why I didn't know. And like I said, moving forward, we'll test for it, knowing that it runs in our family just because Clea has it. No one else in my family has Pfeiffer syndrome or any of those um, craniosynostosis. So those are those early questions I always get. Um, what is Pfeiffer syndrome? Is there a cure? How did I find out? Why did I find out so late? And this is just part one. So I'll come back with more 
just info on Five Bear Syndrome if it's been helpful. Leave a comment below and let me know what you're curious about, what questions you have, and I'll do this in a little Five Bear Syndrome segment. Five Bear Syndrome as I know it, being a medically complex mama. Thank you for tuning in and subscribe if you want more. I'm always posting about not just Kalia's rare disease, but motherhood. We do some vlogs, we do some behind the scenes and things that are helpful for all mothers. Thanks guys.